team here. Let me quickly give you the two teams. Uh, Arsenal got Ian Wright and Tony Adams, two of their most influential players, back again. They're suspended from domestic football, but not European. Uh, Wright has Chris Kiwomya as a new striking partner. Kiwomya's first European game. Eddie McGoldrick will play down the right of midfield and Paul Merson down the left. Auxerre, they've been hit by injuries and suspension. They've got their third choice goalkeeper, in fact, in the side tonight, Fabian Kuhl. Uh, Frank Verlat is a Dutch defender. Uh, and Corentin Martin is their captain and most influential midfielder. And Lillian Lalonde is their main striker and top scorer. Our referee tonight, just waiting for the start now, is Leif Sundell from Sweden. He refereed England against Nigeria at Wembley. And also Arsenal's uh, semi-final in the Cup Winners' Cup last season in Paris against Paris Saint-Germain. The subs for Arsenal, Andy Linnigan, Martin Keown, Ray Parler, John Hartson and the goalkeeper Vince Bartram. Well, Ian Wright hasn't scored for a few weeks now, but he's a man for the big occasion. And he'll be looking to hit the back of the net tonight for sure against Fabian Kuhl. Just 22 years old, only three months a pro, a full-time pro that is. And he's had only something like three first-team games now. The third choice. It's a really big and uh, testing night for him. They're a gritty small-town side, Auxerre. But uh, they have a good reputation in French football. They've not been out of the top ten in France since they got into the first division back in 1980. And they will, don't worry, they will test Arsenal to the full here tonight. This is May, who plays left back for them. Go to Arsenal. I think he's going to get the responsibility, lad May is going to get the responsibility of man to man in Kiwanya. And I think it looks very much as if Gomer is going to stick against Ian Wright. With Volat sitting out as a fairly deep sweeper. They are very much man-to-man -man markers, as you say, Ron. This is Lee Dixon with the throw. Goldrick. I was talking to Chris Waddle earlier in the day about him, you know, from his French experience, and he said this coach, particularly away from home, has a tendency to possibly play even six, six markers. Giroud, their manager, who's in fact been the coach at uh, Auxerre since 1961. Well, here's Winterberg. On a break for Arsenal. Stefan Schwartz down the line. And the yellow card is one or two of the other Arsenal players are for this game. The second yellow card means they miss the second leg, of course. Here's Merson. Quite a sharp shower of rain an hour or so ago, so the snow that's coming down is a wet snow. It's not, uh, it doesn't look as though it's going to play. Now, can Arsenal get an early, good early start here right wriggling his way through. Jensen was well involved there as well, but in the end it's a goal kick for Auxerre. Chris Kiwanya. Cool with the kick. Goes bold, but it's Lalonde who gets the header in for Auxerre. Adams lets it go through for the first touch now for David Seaman. show that there's European life after George Graham George who was a master tactician and had so much to do with their European success particularly last season against uh, Palmer and Stuart Houston has made a really good start here with those victories against Nottingham Forest and against uh, Crystal Palace in the caretaker role looking there Brian it's very unusual isn't it to see Arsenal without a big throw we get so we've been so conditioned over here to see Campbell Kiwomya showing tremendous pace here and for that getting across to hold him up this is one I think Merson's got to put right under the bar hang it right under the bar get well, Adams get Paul get all the artillery Arsenal feel that they don't defend very well at the near post, uh, Duos here, so that's where it will go. No, it's gone a much deeper one, this one, towards Tony Adams. They've really studied these Auxerre videos over the last few days, Arsenal, and they've watched them a couple of times, of course, in France. Out goes Seaman. And one of the conclusions they've come to is that they 
defend in a rather naive fashion in the area around the near post. And they will look for Steve Bold, who uh, makes such good little flip-ons from the near post to do a lot of damage for them. The rain and the snow are coming down even heavier now. Along, stopped by Bold. Up to Seaman. You can see the breath of the players standing out on this night air now. The temperature really has dropped quite alarmingly over the last uh, half hour or so. And Giroud, the, the, the coach of Auxerre. A real craggy character and a really wily one too. As I say, he's been in charge of Auxerre since 1961. make a note of how old he is but uh, to be honest with you I can't read a single note that I've made now they've all been washed away in the rain and the snow it's a throw for Arsenal Nigel Winterburn with it Bold going towards the near post Stefan Schwarz is there too putting up Goma there's the shot away well. well that'll do the keeper the world of good with a young keeper like that and they're expecting so much of him he'll either have a nightmare or an absolute inspired game and that was a terrific start uh, for fabian cool oh it was a great great take it was a hell of a shot wasn't it very rather fortunate as well as the parry didn't come out to a, an unrushing Arsenal player. But Goldrick trying to get back. Dixon there also. This is Martins. Arsenal feel he is probably the biggest one influence in this wholesale side, the number 10. Well, they're used to these conditions now. Oh, that was a, a rash challenge there by McGoldrick. Their training last night had to be cut short by a terrible downpour. That was West playing the ball forward. I actually think the uh, French team will like the condition now. They're very much a close passing side and it's a nice slick surface, providing it doesn't get much more. Uh, I think that's important that Arsenal do their, those traditional things there. Hustle Harrison don't allow them to get their passing game going. Here's Tony Adams. A little chip on by him towards uh, Kuomia. Strong challenge again by Adams. He won it twice. But then the ball is just chipped away by Verlant. for Winterburn outside of the boot there not forward Winterburn holding him up again Stefan Schwartz trying to get in and now John Jensen Adams trying to find uh, Kiwomia but May is there Yolo's clearance down by uh, Chris Kiwonia. Got that. May. You'll find it in your experience tonight, Brian. Chris Kiwonia is the save. Is the save. He's quite cool. He really, I actually thought he'd have taken this on, but he really has the last one. And it's a nice, nice early touch. For him. And as I say, fortunately, it's not rebounded to an Arsenal player. A Goldrick. A good bit of play by McGoldrick and a lovely run by Paul Merson. And what about the cross? A little too deep for Ian Wright. Earned himself a yard of space. Winterburn couldn't quite pick it up though. And big uh, West well, loses the ball there to Winterburn. 
Now the break could be on. This could be a problem for Arsenal. Adams is trying to get across there. Lamushi trying to... Oh, that was a poor ball played in, and that was so easy for Seaman. But they show that they might be dangerous on the counter break. Yeah, they've got some good pace in the side. That's, that was very apparent from that break. Actually, Lamushi, if he'd have played the ball in early instead of dwelling on it, he got their lawn in a very, very good position in the centre of goal. The encouraging thing there with Paul Merson's uh, run was the fact that it's the type of run that's necessary. Diagonal runs across the line of the markers. I mean, it's, it's food and drink for them if, they, if the players just stay static against the markers. They've got to show a lot of movement. Rahirua. Oh, my goodness. It's across the face of the goal, and it's just gone wide from Lalonde. Arsenal felt that was going behind for the goal kick from Rahirua's shot, and Lalonde has missed a glorious opportunity of getting a vital away goal here for Auxerre. Well, that's an absolute let-off, and I mean, Vahiru has actually had a lash of goal with the first one, and Leilon really has missed an, an absolute stone-blind certainty. That's, actually, that's absolute complacency, by the way, on the Arsenal's back, back on them there. They just automatically assumed it was going nowhere. The Auxerre supporters and the Arsenal fans of the clock will you please take your seats? Thank you. into 12 and that would have been a priceless start for the French Cup winners who beat Montpellier 3-0 in their final and so far in this uh, tournament have beaten uh, Croatia of Zagreb and they lost 2-0 out there but came back and won 3-0 at home I mean the general consensus of opinion isn't it that they're a very very ordinary side away from home but at home they're quite formidable but I think they've got a terrific spirit in the side they were 2-0 down in uh, Istanbul against uh, Beziktas in another European game this season came back to 2-2 and won 2-0 at home so I think they are one of those irritating awkward sides that you feel haven't got a lot of class and, uh, and style about them but are always in their battling and here's Lallon again given away very badly there to Jensen but Jensen in turn uh, losing it to uh, Rabaveroni right Dixon flattened there by Vahirua that's going to get a free kick and Vahirua who's an experienced player born in Tahiti actually and a French international of some standing but gets a yellow card there for Bahirua that's good refereeing that because I, I would think 9 out of 10 referees wouldn't have seen that because he was so far off the ball I mean he's blatantly blocked off Dixon making a, a forward run Godric doing well but the cross is too deep, far too deep. Yes, that's very, very poor from Eddie McGoldrick there. Beat the fellow for fun and he's actually had a loads of time to produce a ball. He's got big people in the box. They've got to produce better quality than that if, uh, if I'm going to win the bet, certainly. short of a uh, full house here at Highbury one or two empty seats in the Osea end but something in the region of 36,000 here tonight Romia doing well Flick on by Lamouche. Bahuria. This should be easy for Stefan Schwartz to get clear for Arsenal. There's 
because I think the way the, the rigid man-to-man -man marking at the back, I think there's an awful lot of movement got to be made by Kiwamnia and Wright, and they're going to have to make runs for other people. They're going to have to keep running sometimes to disturb defenders to allow the likes of Merson, Dixon and Winterburn to come from deeper positions. somewhere there if Kiwamne does win it you know I think Ian Wright staying a little bit wide I'd like to see him run onto the sweeper more because failing if Kiwamne does win the flick on Frank Vallat's just going to pick up all the spare balls or let them run through to the keeper there I think perhaps Ian Wright is going to try and do as he would do off Alan Smith and try and read the flick on you know, possibly take his marker onto the sweeper He's made a good break. Kawamia picked him up well. He picked for Arsenal. Some excellent work from Kiwamnia there. Came out wide, held the ball up, turned in field, and then played a lovely little ball through for Dixon. This is an opportunity. I mean, we've seen it in Europe, particularly with Arsenal last season, where they've produced goals from this position. Adams arriving late. Ball has just peeled away. It's played in there a long way towards the far side and. Uh, Kiwamia, but Osea get it away, then they're stopped by Paul Merson. Merson, really a jinking run of his, and he's in good form as well. Goldrick, getting it long, right, he might pass nicely for him, down he goes. This has gone in any case, the whistle's long since gone. Free kick to Orsay. Once again though, Brian, another good run from Ian Wright. A nice crossover, nice interchange with Kiwamnia. It's a thankless task when, the, when people are playing up front when they're having to play against man-to-man -man markers. 20 goals this season for Ian. Touch of handball there. All day through to David Seaman. Side or so. they're not giving them giving much space at all. They, they, they retreat to the halfway line and then they all press the ball together from there. Side of the boot towards McGoldrick. Some good defending, though. That was brilliant build-up, Brian. Absolutely brilliant build-up. Started with some passes through the midfield, and it's a great link up there between Winterburn. And this is sheer class from Stefan Schwartz. Back here to be hurt between two, and McGoldrick just must have fancied his chance here till he's been robbed. Well, let's see what happens at the near post this time. Whether Arsenal will play that ball in towards Bold for that little flick on. There it is, it's flicked on, it's gone across there, and it almost went in. Jensen trying to keep it going, and it was Kiwamnia who turned on it but couldn't quite turn it in. But good, uh, what good. Arsenal suspected looked as though it was true there, that they aren't that uh, strong at the near post. Yeah, but that's a hard ball to defend against for anybody, Brian. It's a quality and a good little eye of from Bull. And I actually thought, I'm, I felt sure Ian Wright was going to get on the end of that. Kiwamnia doesn't quite know his bearings when it's dropped down to him, but... As you look here, I was betting money on Ian right there. Just goes over the top. Some excellent work 
excellent defending though again Masson Kiwomia having a, a real old battle there with Mahi. That's kept in nicely. Martins. Could be problems here. Could still be problems. But Arsenal in the end getting around and eventually getting it away. A little back heel from Jensen and a long clearance by Winterburn. Wright just couldn't keep it going. Here's Merson again. Into John Jensen. In goes Adams. I think John Jensen should be looking forward quicker from midfield there. I mean, he was facing the front people. And he's turned to play a ball back into his own rear guard. It's times when they suggest Brown coming forward or say, though, why they're so formidable on their own ground, because they do look to have some bright people coming forward. Beaten and only uh, four times, Ron, in 27 league games in France this season. They've got a pretty good pedigree. They're the third highest scorers in the league, and they've got the second best defensive record. So all round, they are a very, very competent side. told you all that before you put the bet on for a 4-0 win maybe that guy that was behind me shouldn't have told me it was 40 to 1 <laughs> <laughs> there we are, that was the end of the Goldricks challenge I think that's a foul you know that mm. I actually thought at first the linesman had flagged for a foul it certainly obstructed in the Goldricks run Second leg in uh, Auxerre in a fortnight's time. Martins. And once they set up a routine, they do slick the ball about very well, don't they? Do they do, don't they? And the pitch is favouring it as well. It's got a bit of a gloss on it now, hasn't it? And. Uh, they were very impressed when they came here uh, last night for training. And, uh, In actual fact, when, when you go around and see some of the pitches now, because of the weather we've had, I mean, I think the pitches have deteriorated in England more so than ever. But this, is, this looks an excellent mix. David Seaman with the clearance for Arsenal. Goldrick's lead. I just wonder whether David Seaman might vary that a little bit. You know, that's an Arsenal trait, isn't it? To roll the ball out, load it up into a corner, pressurise, play percentage football. But as I say, they've usually had somebody like Alan Smith or Campbell, somebody that can deal with that or, or take the brunt of the first ball. I just wonder whether he might be a bit encouraged to play, give it out to one of his defenders. I suppose old habits die hard, don't they? It's true. Mahirua. With Martins, that's a good ball he's found for him as well. And it needed Adams in there, calmly to put it away, even at the expense of a corner. He's a good player, this fellow, the captain, isn't he? Martins, yeah. They're, they're the one that they, he was, uh, Arsenal were most worried about him. Current French international. In towards the near post. Merson got it away. Knocked in again, almost fell for the uh, Lamushi again. They get another corner. They're looking very slick at the moment and really quite dangerous. They brought the lat up for this one. They hit these long swinging corners. Not it back in again. Martins. And the Goldrick couldn't quite keep it in play.
just a brilliant ball. It very nearly threaded its way through to uh, Chris Kiwomia. Placing the ball back safely to Seaman. West, the Nigerian. Letting it go for the throw. He's been sent off twice this season. He's a formidable defender. He's on a yellow card, actually, in European competition as well. They're looking really dangerous now. This is Lamushi. Seven. Oh, Martins taking it on. He's there and everywhere at the moment, Martins, isn't he? Supporting, supporting the attacks, in fact, defending when necessary. At this point, you know, Ron, they're looking the better side, aren't they? Yes, they're playing very, very well. I mean, they've missed one very good chance. Apparently, you know, I mean, I'm looking and think we might describe it as man-to-man -man marking and all that and quick one-touch passing. It's typical continental football, as, or as used to be described. Apparently, the coach, Guy Rue, is an out-and-out fanatic of Liverpool football. You know, when Liverpool were in their pomp through the 80s and all that, apparently he based everything. I mean, he's been a coach for 30-odd years. Exactly. He based, in 61. He based everything. He, apparently, everything Liverpool, he, he was an absolute Liverpool fanatic. Well, they had a great battle in the... Against Liverpool, didn't they, in the UEFA Cup a few seasons back? And Liverpool lost 2 0 in Osea, but 1 3 0 at Anfield. So that maybe uh, heightened the pride and the uh, feeling he had for Liverpool. This is uh, Winterburn. Romney losing out. Mushi. Gold wins it back again. will need to be very strong and disciplined in defence. Gold and uh, Adams in particular, they've given nothing away as yet, but they look a very, very uh, good side coming forward. It's right. West gets it away. And they've got one or two. This is Goma, who's a defender normally a marker in defense they thought he'd be looking after Merson down that flank but uh, it was actually for what had happened Merson's just lost and now here's him. Merson having lost the marker and Merson might be able to punish him for that but it comes off for that it's ironic that he broke off Merson to join in the attack and Merson couldn't stay with him and nearly sprung a counter-attack Merson again I think he's the one for Arsenal Merson. Though. They need somebody that can unlock it because it's very, very tight for them at the moment. And they, haven't, they haven't got that, if you like, that option of actually being able to sling the ball in in open play. They need somebody that can just produce a trick. And Merson obviously looks the most likely. take so he's had a comfortable game hasn't he hasn't really been extended at all Frank Vallat he just sat behind the, the markers and picked up all the spare spare pit bits Adams gets it back to Seaman West was keeping a very close watch 
on Ian Wright. Winterburn up to right, West just behind him. Jensen, there's a foul on Jensen, it's a free kick. By Martins. be unhappy the way his side are settling into this game still nil nil coming up to the half hour mark as you can see and you the one thing we do know about arsenal in european competitions from last year if, if, if you look at it and they, they were never they were never worried about a no score draw or anything like that whether they, they were content home and away that if it was a no score they wouldn't worry they knew that one chance might come their way Colombia backing into May I think they'll want something to take to Osea. I think that's going to be a very difficult night for them there because uh, apart from the quality of the Osea side they've got Saib uh, an excellent midfielder who returns after injury and Sylvester probably one of their best defenders who comes back after suspension now is the night to take advantage of uh, an Osea side that are hard hit by injuries and suspension Schwartz doing well here gets a long cross in towards Kiwanya a good cross in here yes, he's dug this in deep he's missed the sweeper out on this one Kiwamni has worked off the back he did actually head it for a minute to... and McGoldrick's joining him for a minute I thought May had knocked that behind for um, a corner well with the header up goes West Winterburn for Arsenal Goma Goma literally is following Merson everywhere. In fact, there's so, so many one-to-one -one man marking jobs all over the field, it's unreal. Offside, yes, against Larmouche. You can see if Paul nipped off for a cup of tea, but uh, Goma probably would go with him. It's that discipline there, man marking. Steepold looking for right on the far side couldn't quite keep it in play see the other thing they've done very well uh, Oaks here is they've pinned the Arsenal fullbacks back apart from that one attack when uh, Winterburn joined Swords Arsenal, Arsenal flank defenders haven't really haven't really been able to break forward that's because the, the uh, Oaks here team playing with two wide men and one up the middle Person flick with the outside of the boots Romare getting it foul on uh, Jensen a free kick to Arsenal I still always feel that this is their best chance of uh, opening up the account Arsenal from a set for set pieces for the young goalkeeper Adams now on the edge of the Osea box Kilomia and right, very active. Jensen just outside the box. There's the ball floated in towards Tony Adams. Who claimed that uh, Balak was climbing all over him. Balak again, hitting it long, knowing that Adams has still some ground to make up to get back to defend. Martins, this could be a problem. Bahirua. And it came off uh, Lee Dixon. Surprised me a little bit, uh, Vahiru. You know, he's just playing like out on the left and a stand and deliver man. Good left foot, but I've, I've seen him on other times where he's absolutely raced down the flank. 
certainly in the European Championships a couple of years ago. Oh, that's a nice bright corner for them. Martins hit long there. But Arsenal get it away again. Dixon uh, a full stretch to hold off two here. Martins and Vaharua. In the end, uh, Lee Dixon has got some uh, support from McGoldrick. And McGoldrick losing it badly there. And Dixon had to come back. Finding Merson and Arsenal making a meal of getting this ball away. And in the end, Merson hits it straight to another Osea player. They've got a good head of steam going now, the French Cup winners, but Mahiru can't keep it into play. Arsenal throw. McGoldrick. Romia battling with May. Still with May. Oh, that was Schwartz who is already on a yellow card, he misses the second leg. Actually, May was very quick. I think Schwarz was a little unlucky in a I way I think there. it was quickness of foot more than anything yeah. else. There's a lovely little slick turn. Mind you, he has gone in a, he has gone in a little bit wild, hasn't he? So Arsenal without Stefan Schwarz for the second leg. Vahirua. A deep one towards the far post. And a good catch. Under a lot of pressure from Big Goma. Took a bit of a knock as well. West. Benson was touching it there for Dixon. Merson. Here's May. fans here and there are quite a few of them Don't be too unhappy with the way their side are performing so far Osea some 90 odd miles south of Paris I'm told in Shabli country which might make the second leg quite a pleasurable experience And throw. This is excellent stuff. But in the end, it's Adams who steps in. Back to Seaman. And no nonsense there. The other thing they're doing as well, Brian, even Lalonde, who's the big centre forward, if you like, the traditional centre forward. He's not pushing right up against the two big Arsenal centre-backs. They're just pulling a bit short and very often leaving the Arsenal centre-backs Bolden Adams with nobody to mark. Adams with that clearance. Romney alone up front. Goma finds Vallat. sort of ball Brian it's been an Arsenal stock ball hasn't it knock it up the gullies and usually have one of the big lads ready to present himself usually Alan Smith and at the moment they've got the two bright lively fellas up front uh, Bold getting it back that wasn't an easy one if you want me you're and right uh, and it's, it's very very difficult just to keep flying balls up Being tackled from behind by West. May's beaten Kiwamia quite easily in the air. Jensen knocks it wide again for West. And West then sportingly plays the ball out. This is what caused it wrong. Yeah, it's just stuck on his left ankle. I mean, when you're doing su such a tight man-to-man -man marking job as that, you're always running the risk of doing that to your opponents, but you're also running the risk of taking bookings. Well, yellow, uh, a yellow card for West. 
already holds one so uh, there's another person who'll be missing from the second leg Too much free space for that. He's playing in a canter at the moment. They re really need somebody, be one of the front players, to, to run the marker onto him. Try and, try and take his space out. A dangerous ball from Winterburn. Martins. Oh. Rahiru. Right in towards. Oh, la la. Flicked on with the header, got there before Steve Bowles. It was a good move and a dangerous move again. Great stuff by Vahiru here. He's forced inside by Dixon, so he's just played a tidy little right-footed ball. Here's Lalonde, gets the little eyebrows, can't get enough on it. I just wonder why, where the ball should have held his ground a little bit. Usually an Arsenal defender here would hold his ground and let him run into free space, but I wonder whether the chance that Lalonde missed earlier maybe has just just worried the arsenal back line a little bit normally they'll hold the line let the guy run offside there that was that was quite a good chance though i suppose yeah you have to say in fact you've said it brian that uh, at the moment osir have been the boss side they've been quicker sharper and they've had the two better better chances their passing has been excellent too, hasn't it? Yeah, the select, the movement's good. Well, that's... And so much of it stems from the number 10. Martins, the captain. Yeah, it's hard to pick a position for him. You, you, one minute he's playing as the anchor man in midfield, next minute he's right, in, right up behind the front plan. Piolo. And a goal kick for us. haven't given their fans an awful lot to cheer it's still nil nil Must be a foul again. Bahiru has just done nothing else but blatantly obstruct uh, McGoldrick there. Happens all the time, doesn't it? Yeah, but I mean that's that's an accepted thing, isn't it? On the kind of what he just blocks his run. No attempt, no attempt. McGoldrick would get that. Now by Adams on Lalon. A free kick to Osea. with it bold on the other end but bold beating in the air I tell you what this will be a good half time for the Arsenal which is an unusual thing to be saying you would have expected fully expect to come here in Highbury tonight and see see them get up ahead of Steve and pin them down with corners and free kicks but that hasn't happened I mean we're seeing it seeing an awful lot of Lalonde in the opposite penalty box almost making things happen Nahiru in steps McGoldrick now John Jensen. Back to Tony Adams. The last two minutes of the first half. And a fairly ominous first 43 minutes for Arsenal. Romia. That's being chased by Merson. Adams. That's a good ball there. Dixon. 
wide again from the goal brick. to McGoldrick. There's not much time here. Their tackling is quick and it's crisp. And they came out to catch Paul Merson offside. Setting you that little poser sometime in the uh, half time interval. Good work there by Adams, beating Martins. Merson taking it on, but uh, Goma doing his job well. And some good passing here again from Osea. Look at this, terrific stuff as uh, they sweep forward again. Martins, their captain. Amushi. Towards. Striker again, who was offside, la onside, Lalon. The flag stayed down. Arsenal were looking towards the linesman. Oh, he's not offside, no, Brian. It was I a good, well-timed run there. I tell you what, they, they lack a concentration between the two central defenders. They were, as I say, they would be happier with him stood up against them. But what he's doing, he's coming off short and then making his runs in. And then that's about the fourth time he's been in the box, not marked properly, with a reasonable chance. Whistle goes, and a chance for Stuart Houston maybe to put one or two things right in the Arsenal side, and certainly Lillian Lalon has had opportunities to put uh, Auxerre a couple of goals in the lead by half-time. The French Cup winners looking at this stage the more impressive of the two sides. But at half-time here in this Cup Winners' Cup first leg tie at Highbury, Arsenal nil, Auxerre of France nil. But they really, they, they, they need a goal here, don't they, Arsenal? Well, yeah. I mean, they wouldn't like to go to, to France. But... OK, obviously not too happy with the first half. Well, uh, we started well, but as the games went on, we've, we've found it difficult to break them down, and I just think we'd, maybe the option of John Hartson now just might give us a lift. Thank you very much, John. OK. Well, we're back here in the commentary box with me, Brian Moore, and Ron Atkinson. It is still a mixture of rain and snow here. A pretty dirty old night in North London. Hartson on, number 15, going straight down through the middle, and uh, jumping for that one, and no doubt... Uh, Ron uh, Stuart Houston hoping that he will cause a few problems in the air for that uh, Auxerre defence. Yes, I also think he'll be going to try and uh, take up a bit of Valat's uh, space. We'll look at that for oh, a there's a lovely ball here now. Oh. Mushi. There's a great opportunity here. Oh, the referee looked hard at it and looked hard again. And in the end, it goes for the goal kick. It looks certainly... Well, worth uh, a query about the penalty, and that's what the French are feeling. Oh, I've seen them give him one, I'm sure I've seen them give him for less than this. I mean, he should have actually played a better ball than that. Dramatic with the dive. Maybe if the ball hadn't have found to him, we should give him with a decent chance, the referee might have given him something. That is an exquisite ball, isn't it? He should do better here, actually, Little Mushu. Little Mushu. play a nice little ball across the face. He, he hasn't really played a decent ball, but that was a, re that was a realistic shout, that for a penalty. May gets it clear for Osea. Adams with a little header down now for Bold. Pick on by Hartson. For that. Merson taking it up. Ironically enough, that's, ironically enough, Brian, that's the first time the lads being put under any pressure. Now Merson again from Winterburn's ball. Across the goal there. And crossed in. And just wide. Actually, somebody should have slid him. That's a lovely little ball through from Winterburn. He does brilliant here, Merson. Faces it across and say, go on, slide and knock that one in. 
when he's turned around, when he's turned on that one, Ian Wright, I felt sure he's going to hook that in the top uh, right-hand corner. Well, look at that, it's a lovely ball. That's that says go in and get me that ball. The end. Ian Wright couldn't keep it down, and it stays at the end. I think what Stewart's done actually, he's gone back to the system they had in a lot of games last year with three strikers, nobody really playing wide, with the two, the two, uh, if you like, the two of the wider strikers diving in uh, and supporting the big guy at the middle. They're still doing the man-to-man -man marking job again. Discipline's still there, but now they've got an extra problem now. And I'm pretty sure that they won't allow, as I say, Valak the room to, to drop off and just organise at the back. Well, West the Nigerian's taken hearts, and we can see him here. And May has now taken right. What it does mean, of course, it, I mean, it's a lovely... That was good support play by Winterbourne there when he put Mercy in. They've really got to try somehow and then get Dixon up on the other side. That's not going to be easy with Vihara occupying that space. Kuwamia. Hartson couldn't gather. Goma gets it clear. Lamushi. Still Lamushi. Play back to Martin. Up to Lalon. Offside against uh, Lamushi. Only uh, half a yard in it. i tell you what, some of their one touch passing when we were sort of eulogizing first half how good it was. And they're certainly, they're certainly doing the same again this time. I do think that's a good positive move from Arsenal right? to put an extra attacker in and try and hustle and hound their defence a little bit more. Their defence had a very, very comfortable first half, really, for, for an away team. Excellent. There's Mercy. All right, gets it clear quite comfortably. Lallon, Martin. Here's Schwartz. Light 
just peeled off to the uh, far side there. No free kick. He's been a bit lenient, the referee, actually. He's let one or two uh, fairly heavy challenges go. Break on again now, Martin. Yolo offside against Mamushi. You know, Martin and Leilu, and uh, they, do, they do have some good little combat. Leilu's dead cute at just dropping off. Just drops off the arse, two big centre backs. Just drops off just enough to give him a make a nice little target and present himself and play one, one touch of passes. Swedish lines were not the most popular man. He thought in that corner that it was an Arsenal throw. And you always have that nagging thought with Arsenal as well, don't you? Brian? I mean, I can see that you remember last year when they were playing in Paris and people like that even Torino here you always felt the, the opposition were the better side and all of a sudden Arsenal won the game and I think that's that's something Arsenal won't have lost that that will to win that that thing that's been ingrained into them over the years well here's Martin they got some defending to do first Yolo okay plays in that little awkward position to Mark Martin and you sometimes wonder whether Arsenal might be better employed saying to John Jensen, hey, sit on him and sort of make sure he doesn't play. So it's, uh, it's not everybody undercover here, I can tell you. And that tonight includes the commentators. The snow has been <laughs> driving in at us as well. But this is warming us up a little bit now. It Arsenal is, are getting right. ahead of steam. Stefan Schwartz. All just gathering a bit of pace this very wet turf beating Ian Wright's challenge for it Lamushi in comes Bold it's on the half volley a real up and under Chris Kuomia there but it didn't fall for him it was May who just got the important touch and again it's a throw to Osair I mean, you think the battering this pitch has taken from the rain over the last weeks, and certainly over the last 24 hours, the drainage here is really first class, because it's, it was a terrific downpour last night, and there's been one tonight. Here's Boma. Now, if Arsenal can counter-attack, there presumably is nobody marking Paul Merson, but uh, <laughs> Jensen and Martin having a right tussle there. The referee decides it's a quick free kick that uh, Osea can have. No yellow cards. Yolo. Lemushi. Sorry, it was Schwarz sliding in. Goma, number two. Schwarz going with him. Wittleburn, a good challenge. Schwartz, Merson trying to turn it back for Jensen. Interesting there, like Gomar's gone way ahead of the game, limping up the right-hand side. Merson's got free space, thought he was unmarked, and all of a sudden the fellow's just going to challenge him now, Martin up here. Lallon. Beaten by the challenge of uh, Ian Wright. But Lallon gets back at him, finds Martin. Jensen quick to challenge. Piolo. And Adams can chest it back to Seaman. Hartson. And an offside against Lalon, who was really no more than uh, two to three yards inside the Arsenal half. Adams will take it. Now, of course, he's got an option, Max, and he's played a low ball. I was just going to say, he's got the, he's got the, uh, the license to slam on it. Come on, you stop well here. And Valak got a good header in, too. A very good defensive header in there for Osair. I actually think Kiwam has looked quite lively, actually, all through the game, considering it's probably to his, uh, to his European debut, I guess, isn't it? It is. He's got a lot of pace about him. Two goals in two games. Hartson trying to flick it on. Should be winning those. That's the second one. He's been as high as the ball. He should have been his favourite to win those, Hartson. And that's what he's been put on there for. 
to make sure the ball doesn't keep coming back at them to win, to get his, his share of the, the area. Hartson turning. But, uh, West in the end got back at him. Schwartz. Right. Jensen. Trying to get it out to Winterburn. Succeeds in doing so. Lamushi, though, then dispossessing the Arsenal fullback. Arsenal throw. Don't know why. Do you always get the feeling in these games that Arsenal are going to win the win? And having looked second best for most of the game. Shots. Free kick for Arsenal. about taking it quickly there Winterburn they had a change of mind Merson and uh, Stefan Schwartz behind it the French persuading the Swedish referee to take it back a couple of yards it's going to be Paul Merson's responsibility it's a long driving one and a very effective one as well and they haven't got this away yet they still haven't got it away Jensen's shot charged down the first one penalty Jensen brought down, and the referee had a clear view of it and had no hesitation whatsoever pointing to the spot. Not even an argument, Brian. Not even an argument. Jensen volleyed the first one. Follows it, follows his shot up. It's a reckless lunge at him. Not even an argument. West, the guilty one. Right, presumably, uh, the penalty taker. The stretcher coming on, though, first for John Jensen. Yeah, it looks as if he's caught him right across the ankle there. And that's come at the end of some sustained pressure play. Not particularly attractive. Starts with a, a traditional Arsenal ball in from a free kick, but they kept the pressure on. They kept the ball in there, and if this one gets tucked away, they'll have got their rewards. That's good to see him walk onto that stretch of mine. Sorry? It's, it's good to see him walk onto yes. the stretch of yes. it there. Well, it's a, it's a huge responsibility for Ian Wright. 20 goals this season. And they would just dearly love the cushion even of a solitary goal to take to the second leg in France in a fortnight. Cool the goalkeeper. Right, the penalty taker. Swedish referee wanting to be sure that the defenders are outside that penalty area. The pressure building up for Ian Wright. The ball not properly on the spot for him. He's a confident young man, though. was an excellent penalty wasn't it nice and nonchalant I was a bit worried when he started looking at the referee and but that, that was an excellent penalty it was a real test of nerve that there'd been those delays while Jensen was carried away a delay while the referee talked to the defenders a delay while he asked Ian Wright to make sure it was properly on the spot and then bang 1-0 Teams for Osea and Lamushi right in behind them and in the end uh, the ball falling onto his back and then falling comfortably now for Nigel Winterberg now you can hear the Arsenal crowd West who conceded the penalty Dixon and there 
again, you know, the big centre forward, Lillon, there's, 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 a, there's a massive Arsenal defenders in there, and yet they still allow Lillon to, to get himself free. I think it might be a free kick to Auxerre for the two-footy challenge by uh, Lee Dixon. need to defend well here and it's gone right in it's Velax and it's an important away goal for Osir well that's that's the last thing Arsenal wanted but all credit to Osir I think nobody really can begrudge them that and it's an excellent ball it's an ugly ball whipped in there and but but he flings himself with his first across there gets to the near post Frankie Velax and uh, well incredible isn't it but that, that's a, that's an excellent ball and that's an ugly one to deal with and he's attacked it really has gone he's got in front of one of his own players actually on one that's a real bad blow for Arsenal free kick given for the challenge the unfair challenge by Lee Dixon down by the corner flag up right <laughs> low this time low stopped by Schwartz Tony Adams wide to Kiwanya on the far side, a foul on him and a free kick. Schwartz tries something with the left foot here. Floated in. Old went for it, but didn't get to it. And Arsenal could be well stretched here. There are three, four, five Osea players led by Lamushi. And Viola there as well. But in the end, Winterburn makes the challenge. And another bit of a wasted ball from Lamushi, though, wasn't it? Played it bit heavy. Viola would have wanted that in his run, and Arsenal would have been in real trouble. Osea with the throw. You know, when you think about it, both these teams have put an awful lot of planning and, and thought in tonight's game, you know, Brian. And yet, nobody would have thought a corner flag as that one's just done. It's going to play such an important part, That's on right. it? Everybody gives That's the right. ball up for dead, and now all of a sudden hits the corner flag, stays in play. Of course, Dixon to make that rush challenge. Touch on by Kiwomya. Jensen. Picking out Adams. Hartson. And in nicely. And he's found right. Oh, just over the top. I think that may have struck the bar minor. That's brilliant football from uh, the two front players. Hartson, a great turn, great ball in. Quick as lightning. But I'm sure that's just nicked the top of there. That's a lovely ball through the good. His first to it. He's got the first touch. Yes, yes just flicked off the top. The top. I mean, that has to go down as a chance, but you've got to also say on, on the credit side, that's some beautiful football. Probably the best bit of football Arsenal play tonight. Oh. Right, fall for Hartson then. Arsenal's five goal attempts, Osea five. Up goes Hartson again, but Arsenal have looked much better in this second half. It's okay. for them that they've conceded that goal to Osea. Adams has taken the tumble. Well, oh. seems quite an active bang, actually. Adams, but he's had problems this season, hasn't he? Hartson. Hartson. Oh, now gets it clear. Adams running a little more easily now. Have to 
say, Brian, I don't know if it's a suspension or what tonight, but Tony Adams hasn't looked himself at all. I mean, he's looked to be in some sort of discomfort for, for most of the night. Through suspension, and he was sent off uh, against Sheffield Wednesday. He is again leaping for that ball, Tony Adams. Sharks. In the way there, but... Uh, Yolo comes away with it first, cut out well by Winterburn. He's been as good as anybody in the Arsenal side tonight, Winterburn, I think. Merson, poking it through now, picked up by Jensen. Merson takes it on. That's an obstruction, surely. And it is. I guess it's almost inch to the inch where they scored the goal from, where he took the free kick they scored the goal from. Merson with it. really think that's the best free kick Paul Merson's ever taken. Nope. In fact, normally, I, I, st I started to believe he's trying to bend it into the net as the keeper's organising his defence. I'm, I'm not sure whether he didn't try and cross it to the far stick. I mean, those are the situations Arsenal can least afford to, to waste. Well, we're halfway through the second half, just past that point, in fact. From the Arsenal point of view, you have to say, and I, they haven't defended well in terms of the marking, hasn't been as good as normal. Adams. Here's John Jensen. Oh, that shot's a bit short there. Bold to Hartson. for Arsenal and uh, for that an excellent header to make it 1-1 the goal for Ose for that Lamushi Viello Lamushi Martin Lallon, and he'll be lucky there Tony Adams, Adams. No, he's going I say they've been lucky to get away with that. They just blatantly blocked off uh, Martino when he tried to play the 1 2 with Leilon. So the yellow for Tony Adams. He's not already carrying one, so he's all right for the second leg. But here's the lat at the free kick for Osea. But in there, Adams with a good header away, got a good deal of length on it. Got that one away as well. Along, easily taken by Seaman and sends Nigel Winterburn away again. Kiwamia. So we look at this goal again, taking your point, Ron, to see whether there, in fact, was more than one white shirt in there. I think it was more from one sort of one from behind the goal, it showed it, but uh, I suppose, uh, from the French point of view, they're just happy enough that there was at least one in there. Goal back pedaling under pressure from Lalon. Seaman gets it away. Just poking out a foot as D 
assisted uh, Winterburn. Balls more comfortably for Steve Bold. And now Paul Merson. Look at Goma. Right at him again. Merson well inside his own half. But that doesn't stop Goma following him. Right. Struggling to keep it in play. But in the end gets the throw for Arsenal. Tony Adams right up there. Person. Dixon. That's an interesting cross. Adams is in there. Hartson's in there too. Oh, the keeper had it lost it. It was kicked off the line, it was almost an own goal. The first serious mistake actually the keepers made, and it very nearly cost them a goal. Now, at first, I thought Hartson had taken this away from Adams, and I thought he might have been better leaving that time. The confusion there, and at once, yeah, but that's I thought it was a little bit nearer the line as well than that. May was the man who cleared it off the line. Merson's the man with the corner towards the near post as Adams came flying in there. Chasing away, Mamushi on this side, Winterburn needs to cover him. That was a great ball by Vahirua. Martins, goal kick. We haven't seen him do that much tonight, have we, Martins? Fortunately for Marcel, he didn't, uh, he didn't have the right weight on his one two. As you can see, the weather's not getting any better. He's like a new player back here and he's beginning really to look much more like his old self, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, when he latched onto that one and that's the first time he's really been able to get himself free and with a good shooting uh, opportunity. I must confess, I thought, uh, you know, you've seen him score some terrific goals, Merson. I thought we might have been his score for us there. There was a truly delightful picture of him and his family actually in the London Evening Standard tonight uh, suggesting as the Arsenal backroom staff will tell you that he's really getting himself together both on and off the field now. So there's big battles for Paul Merson and at the moment he seems to be on a winning streak. Parsons pass was far too strong there. It's not much fun in the commentary box tonight, but what about our cameraman down at touchline? Not much fun for him either. It's a bit bold. Their difference. Siemens clearance. Lamp meeting it with some force. He's had an outstanding game actually for last, hasn't he? I mean, I thought this half they'd give him a lot more problems. But with an extra attacker on but he's, he's dealt with it and he's also had the added bonus of uh, pulling them back into the game John Jensen but it fell just behind uh, Ian Wright 
Now with the throw for Arsenal. Finds Vincent with it. Merson. There's Merson's cross. Oh my goodness. Adams couldn't quite get to it at the far post. Merson very nearly created something out of nothing there. And Frank Vallat now brings it away again for Rosaire. Martin. Viola and a goal kick some substitutions about to be made certainly one here and I think also there's a chance for Adam Merson does really well here Ron yes this is a great run he's just starting to get the fresh three of the shackles that's a lovely ball in I think Adam at first thought maybe Hartson was going to attack the ball at the near post and probably probably that threw him a little bit number 12 Ravavinovi is going off and uh, Remy is on and uh, Ray Parler Ray Parler on for Arsenal in place I think of Chris Kiwomia certainly uh, Remy is easier to pronounce than uh, Bravo Riveney, but uh, and we have how much longer? Just over ten minutes. Steve Bold. Driven the heart zone. Turns well again. I noticed in that European Super Cup here uh, against Stacey Milan, he turned Baresi once absolutely beautifully, and uh, that certainly takes a bit of doing. But he's turned well once or twice here, and he put uh, who was it? He put right put in right yes. brilliantly when he when he turned in field and just played the ball between between defenders there. Parler has gone into that more orthodox right-handed position. But even, even so, he's running into fill in and join up with the front players. Adams underneath this. It looked like a handball, but the referee was well placed and decided it wasn't. Sarah, I think, possibly bringing on another substitute. Batikul is going to take the place of Bahirua. Uh, Adams comes in. Person shot just over. Good effort. That's encouraging for Arsenal because in the last 10 minutes or so, Merson has just got himself a little bit more space. And he's had three or four very good attempts. Not a lot to spare there, so they've made a second substitution. Batical, who's on, he's. Uh, well, they say Batical. That's Kokar who's on. It's Steve Bold. It's Hartson. And a goal kick to Osea. Oh, challenging bold. Person. Here's Adams. 
driving forward again for Arsenal Artson being held there but still finds Lee Dixon on the far side now Dixon with time to cross this in came off the defender for the corner that's I think that's the first time Lee Dixon's been upfield hasn't he and produced a cross and I just wonder if it's because Bahiru has gone off enabled to have that little bit of extra space and license here comes the corner floated towards the near post Hartson going for it it will be dinked in again there by Stefan Schwartz Merson battling with Goma as he's done right from the first whistle Dixon, Dixon again there it looks as though uh, the French are consolidating in their own half with a little over six minutes left 1-1 one, one would suit them superbly I think that might help Arsenal a bit in the closing minutes you know it may enable Arsenal to build up ahead of steam get pressure get some corners get some free kicks Violo gets a yellow card Arsenal get a free kick. Mercer. Goma gets it away. Here's Winterburn. Mercer. Speaker, the attendance just over 35,000. Winterburn with the throw. Harler trying to uh, knock it on. Hartson in there as well. They get a corner. Crowd in the north back now find their voices again. Urging Arsenal now to get this second vital goal. Merson with the corner. driven there towards Tony Adams Winterburn Dixon up to Parler he has been excellent for that good strong defending there and he also just prior to that on the corner came and cleaned it out with a big big header Parler's done well even more the main striker was back defending there as Arsenal seek to force away through John Jensen Goma with that uh, headed clearance Parler battling away they get a corner one by Ray Parler I think it's in Arsenal's favour that they've decided to sit back and take a one-all draw you know well, they've certainly done that haven't they yeah because they were, when they were counter-attacking they were always a threat here comes the corner floated in by Schwarz again for another corner it was Hartson and shot who was nudged away by the French defense so Schwarz again with the corner Old again is at the near post looking for that little flick on Harlow was there too this time it's a goal kick it needs a little bit more on that Stefan Schwartz a little bit more zip on the ball so when they do like the one in the first half when they do get that at live Rousey it loops the goalkeeper gets gets to it near the second post there's quite a bit of uh, hustle and bustle here as the first corner came in I think it was Hartson near yes, Hartson shot it's charged down might have gone anywhere you know, I mean very often you fire those sorts of shots into a crowd scene and you know, it's quite easy to be deflected into your own net Winterburn a little over two and a half minutes left West with the header clear Lalonde Mamouchi Martins 
some work to be done here by Seaman. Gets it to Stefan Schwartz. West header for Auxerre. One by Winterburn. But it goes straight to Martin. And now Goma. Should be easy for Seaman. The flag was up for an offside in any case. Get on with it, said the referee. And Arsenal now piling people forward. Just over a minute of the game left. Amushi. In their desire to get a second goal, Arsenal must not leave themselves in any way vulnerable at the back. Mushi with the uh, throw. Ballon. Goal kick. There's a bit unlucky there, Leyland. He's trying to play it against Ball's legs. <laughs> That's on him sticking it through Ball's legs and out of play. It's been very high, almost as high as 4 to nothing. 4 nothing. 4 nothing. you said, but it's 1-1 one, one here at the moment. quite the performance and it wasn't quite the result that Arsenal wanted and the opposition might be a little stiffer than they expected and he came through for Ian Wright there and it leaves a pretty hefty job for them to do but not one that's beyond them by any means in the second leg here's Parler getting it in towards Hartson can Hartson finish this off he missed it and so did Wright Schwarz trying to keep it going it's in with Winterburn now but maybe the momentum's gone and there are plenty of white shirts back there. And in the end, Lamushi puts it away, but for Hartson, just for a moment there. Wouldn't come down, Brian, would it? Seemed to hang in the air for ages. You could see Hartson, at first he was going to attack it with his head. Then he was waiting for it to, to give it the full gun when it dropped and it didn't quite come down for him. Now the break is on. Need Dixon to save that one and it goes straight to Martin. Who is dangerous and might be oh i thought he might be a last minute winner but it just cleared that arsenal crossbar the last man in the world you want the ball to fall down so when you when you somebody's counter-attacking is this fella and look at that he's seen seen just off his line try to stand it over him and just narrowly sprays him a minute of time added on Tony Adams just to bang the ball forward now. It's just what he's done towards John Hartson. Oh. Hartson comes for right. Can he produce something for Merson? No. Dixon playing an early ball in it wouldn't find Marson though and Adams is forced to backtrack Adams again again that long ball again Hartson's the target and again Jensen now trying to get in behind them well taken by the keeper good running from midfield that by Johnny Jensen Gamble realized that Hartson was going thought Hartson's going to win the knock on and he's just gambled just ran out of space at the end of it. Dixon. Finding bold. Swedish referee looks at the watch. 
There's the final whistle. And it's a result that will certainly please the French Cup winners, Auxerre, with that vital away goal scored with a header from Frank Vallat after Ian Wright had put Arsenal into the lead from the penalty spot. His 21st goal of the season. So a lot to play for in the second leg in a fortnight time in France.